So thank you to those people who've already joined. Um, as one of our moderators, Sophie's just put in the chat, we are going to wait a couple of minutes to start um, just to allow people to, to join the webinar. Um, as I say, we'll start in about two minutes or so just to give maximum chance for people to join. I, th I think we'll start if everyone's uh, okay with that. Um, uh, my name's Sarah Hayward and I'm a director at Croydon Council. Um, the library service falls under my responsibility uh, at the moment. And as the slide um, says that's up there at the moment, the session it, this evening is being recorded and that's so that we can put it on our website um, uh, in a few days time so that people that weren't able to make the session can also um, view the session, see the presentation, and the and the Q&A. So by staying on the webinar, you are consenting to it being recorded. So if you're not happy with that, um, now is the time to leave. But obviously, we do hope uh, that you will uh, that you will stay. Um, uh, this evening, we've got with us Councillor Ollie Lewis, who's the Cabinet Member responsible for libraries, um, and Rob Hunt, who's a Head of Service in the Council. Um, uh, I'll pass over to them in a second for um, uh, to Councillor Lewis for introductions and to Rob Hunt to take us through um, a presentation. Once Rob's done his presentation, we've had some questions submitted in advance, but there is a Q&A box on the webinar as well for you to, to submit questions as they occur to you uh, during the presentation or, or, or during the later uh, Q&A session. We'll get to as many questions as we can through uh, uh, through the hour that we've got um, and any that remain unanswered will be answered in FAQs that will be published um, uh, in a few days time. So, Councillor Lewis. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. Good evening, everyone. My name is Oliver Lewis and I'm the Council's Cabinet Member for Culture and Regeneration. Um, it's really good to see you all here this evening. Um, it's great that in Shirley we have so many people who are um, interested in and passionate about their library service. Uh, indeed, look, I grew up in Shirley, so um, Shirley Library has a lot of affection um, in my heart. Um, uh, lots of fond memories doing the book trail there as, as a kid many moons ago. But as you will be aware, the council is in a very difficult financial situation. And as a result of this, we're having to take some very, very tough decisions to dramatically reduce our expenditure. Uh, and that is in council services right across the board, um, including in libraries. Um, so we're currently out to consultation on the future of five libraries in the borough. And in addition to Shirley, they are Broad Green, South Norwood, Sandersted and Bradmore Green. And the consultation was due to, to finish on the 7th of March, but I'm pleased that we've been able to extend the first phase of that consultation which will now run until the 14th of March. Um, Rob will update um, uh, the webinar about the, the full timetable for the full consultation. Um, but these webinars are an, an important part of that consultation. Um, this week we are um, over um, yesterday evening, this evening and tomorrow evening we're, we're doing one for each of the five libraries that I mentioned earlier. Um, and we hope that they are useful and informative for all of you. Um, we hope that through the consultation, we may be able to, de to develop some community run um, library models that maintain the current level of library service, but also help to re uh, dramatically reduce the council's expenditure. Um, 
I'll leave it there, but um, just encourage everyone um, to participate this evening and put some questions in the Q&A and hopefully um, we'll be um, able to uh, answer them all. So um, thanks, Sarah. Thank you, Councillor Lewis. Um, brilliant. Over, over to you, Rob, then to get straight on with the presentation. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Robert Hunt, Interim Head of Assets and Involvement, uh, so Head of Service for, for Libraries. Um, so I'll just run through uh, some slides that outline the, the process and the, uh, the consultation, that uh, outline the process, the, uh, the decision making for, for some of the libraries and for some further information that we've got from uh, the initial level of feedback uh, at this stage of uh, the consultation process. So uh, the consultation process is, is being running in two phases. Uh, we're currently in, in phase one, which is about information gathering. So we've uh, put our proposal out there for uh, the closure of uh, five libraries at uh, Broad Green, Bradmore Green, Sandersted, Shirley and South Norwood, uh, all for those to be operated on a cost neutral basis, uh, either by the local community or uh, in some other capacity. Uh, and um, this is an opportunity for, for the council to gather all of that information and then make a, um, a decision on, on what best approach to, to take going forwards. Uh, and that will be as part of phase two, uh, where we'll go out for a further round of consultation with more detailed proposals. Uh, so to just give you a, uh, an idea of the timescales involved, so we launched uh, phase one of the consultation on the 14th of January 2021. Uh, and as Councillor Lewis mentioned, we've extended that now to the 14th of March. Um, that allows for additional time for uh, postal, uh, for paper surveys, to be uh, submitted uh, as we do know there are issues at the moment uh, with parts of the postal service so we just want to, to give a maximum amount of opportunity for people to, to provide their feedback. Uh, we are hosting a number of uh, webinars uh, such as the one this evening so there was uh, one on Saturday that covered the the whole of the library service uh, and that was followed by a uh, a webinar from uh, peers across the country, uh, six uh, libraries across the country uh, that were community run libraries uh, and each of those uh, examples gave a, a different uh, way that community libraries could be run uh, and then uh, we hosted a session last night for, for South Norwood and then uh, two sessions tonight and two sessions uh, tomorrow. Um, We'd like to uh, encourage uh, as many residents as possible to complete the, the survey. Uh, it is open to uh, residents to complete the survey multiple times. Uh, so if you receive more information, if you've already submitted and you receive more information tonight or in uh, the weeks to come and you want to complete the survey again, uh, you are able to do so and we would welcome that. Paper copies of the survey are available. So uh, if you would like one of those, then uh, details of how to contact us are available at the end of the, the webinar, uh, but either through our email address or through our dedicated telephone line. Uh, and we will be producing a report based upon the all the feedback we've received in phase one to scrutiny on the 30th of March uh, that outlines everything that we've, uh, we've found so far and the analysis that we've undertaken. Uh, and then the next steps and the proposals for how we uh, plan to develop uh, and reshape the, the library service going forwards. We'll then enter phase two, uh, which will start off with a, uh, a report to Cabinet in May uh, that outlines the, the detailed proposals for, for the library service, um, including all the, the feedback that we've received, um, received to date. Uh, we'll then begin phase two consultation based upon those proposals throughout May and June, um, which then gives you a, a further opportunity to, to provide feedback as to uh, things that we need to consider. Uh, and then we'll work through the council's decision making process uh, through the summer after uh, the consultations uh, close. So that'll be additional scrutiny, uh, cabinet and full council uh, for a decision. And then based upon that, we will implement any changes to the library service uh, from the autumn onwards. 
So as of the 13th of February, uh, we've had 1,493 uh, respondents to the survey. Uh, and I'm, I'm pleased to say that as of today's figure, uh, that's now close to 1,700 responses. Uh, so we're really pleased with the, the level of feedback uh, that we've had so far uh, from the uh, from the local community and uh, the passion that, that that shows for our library services. Uh, but we would uh, like to urge you to continue to, to complete the survey, particularly if you haven't done so all, already, uh, or to continue to provide uh, new feedback to us. Um, so today, uh, We've had uh, responses to to the first question on uh, on the survey, which is around uh, which is your local library. Um, we've had responses from uh, one thousand three hundred and thirty seven members to date, so over ninety percent have been from people who who are existing uh, library service members, um, as well as one hundred and eighteen from non members. Uh, and looking at the, the the table on the slide, you can see that. Uh, nearly 15 uh, over 15 percent of the um of the respondents that we received so far have been from Shirley Library so that's really positive to see that uh the local community is providing that feedback uh as to how we can shape the service going forwards from the uh the feedback that we received so far um uh, 1351 uh people have have replied uh stating at least three services uh, that they think are the, their top three uh, ac across libraries. And the, the key ones so far have been uh, the browsing and borrowing of books, activities for, for children and adults, uh, be that rhyme time, story time, reading groups, um, IT access, uh, whether that be use of our uh, computers or uh, free Wi-Fi, um, printing services, or, or the online virtual library. Um, and then uh, the other key area that uh, really is starting to stand out for us is around uh, the space for people to, uh, in libraries to use to do uh, for work activities, uh, for research, or for uh, study, either as uh, adults or uh, for school-aged children. So a little bit more detail around Shirley Library. Uh, it's currently open for 44 and a half hours per week. Uh, last year we had uh, 29,617 visits, uh, which makes up uh, 2.13 of the overall visits within the, the borough. Uh, there are currently uh, just over 18 and a half thousand books held within Shirley Library, uh, which generate 29,270 issues, which again is just over five percent of the total issues across the borough. Uh, there are seven PCs that can be used by adults and children which uh, have been used uh, for 4,190 IT sessions uh, but that's only 22 percent of all the available uh, sessions within, uh, within the library. We were asked for, to provide some further information around uh, over the last five years for, for the five libraries that uh, we're looking to, to change the service to. Um, and as you can see, the, the general trend to those libraries, as well as locally and nationally, is that library services are being used less by the, uh, the their local populations. Uh, but looking specifically at Shirley Library, so in 2015-16, uh, there were over 58,000 visits uh, to the library. and by 2019-20, that had reduced down to 31,000. Uh, so there's a, a significant decrease in, in the number of visits uh, to Shirley Library. And that then reflects as well on the, the number of book issues that we've uh, we've seen across Shirley in that time period. Uh, so in 2015-16, there were uh, over 43,000 uh, book issues, and that's now reduced to, to just over 29,000 in 2019-20. And again, there's a, been a downward trend uh, for IT usage uh, across the libraries. Um, so in, in Shirley Library in 2015-16, uh, IT usage was at uh, six and a half thousand 
uh, sessions uh, per year, and that's reduced down to 4,190 in 2019-20, which is a 36% decrease. We've also had uh, questions come through as part of the surveys around uh, the operating expenditure uh, for, our, um, for our libraries. Uh, and so we've provided more of a, a breakdown of that. So business rates uh, for the building are currently uh, £8,102 per year. And that is a, a discounted rate uh, for the library. Um, if that was to be operated by a, a community group, uh, we need to work with uh, colleagues in, in the business rates team to, uh, to see whether that discount would be able to continue. Uh, there is also then um, expenditure within the library on uh, security for, for moving uh, cash that we receive as part of fines and, uh, and for, for selling small items. Uh, and that comes to uh, £245 for the year. And then uh, in addition to that, we receive uh, about £3,300 worth of income, uh, and that is from uh, printing, uh, selling small items such as uh, waste, um, so, uh, ref yeah, refuse bags um, for stationery and posters. Um, so uh, hopefully that provides it the detail that, that people have been looking for. Uh, as a proportion of uh, book stock, uh, the council buys uh, books across the whole of the portfolio um, and spends in the region of £300,000 a year on all of our uh, physical and, and digital uh, materials for uh, across our libraries. Uh, as a proportion, that is uh, about ten thousand pounds for uh, for Shirley Library uh, for uh, adults, children's, and large print materials. Um, we do receive a discount on our uh, book purchases uh, as being part of uh, the library's consortium, and that ranges on on the different types of books uh, that we purchase. Uh, but that is something to factor in uh, if you are considering uh, operating as a community group, uh, how those books uh, would. Uh, could be purchased and whether similar discounts uh, could be applied. We have been asked for additional information on uh, sort of the maintenance and repair of, uh, of Shirley Library. Uh, so uh, a reactive maintenance is uh, things that are unplanned, so uh, a leak or uh, a door breaking or something along those lines. Um, you can see over the last three years uh, we spent uh, 8,600 pounds in 1819, uh, 4,400 in uh, 1920, uh, and that's been reduced down uh, to 1,500 in uh, in 2020. Uh, and then from a, a planned repairs perspective, so where we uh, need to do uh, maintenance and uh, servicing of particular items, um, that's remained relatively steady at 1,547 pounds uh over the uh 18 19 and 19 20 period um so uh hopefully that gives a, a flavor of the the maintenance and, and running costs uh for shirley library um in 2020 we completed a, a building condition survey uh and that highlighted a, a number of uh issues that we uh we need to consider going forwards uh, for the uh, structural integrity of the building. So there are um, issues identified around the, the exterior walls and render. Uh, there are various electrical and mechanical systems that uh, need to be upgraded uh, to modern uh, levels uh, and for uh, a garden system to be installed to uh, the roof space to allow safe access. Um, those uh, costs are estimated to be about £92,000. Uh, they are estimates, they're not based upon quoted works. Uh, so there are, those costs could be slightly higher or slightly lower, but they are in the, uh, the right sort of ballpark. Um, and just one more thing to, 
to highlight around uh, Shirley Library was that it was built in, in the 1930s as a, a, a temporary building. Um, it is now 90 years old as part of that construction. It was built as a um, from a, a non-traditional uh, design. Uh, so it's timber framed with steel uh, structures, um, steel columns that are now at, at the end of their age and, and are likely to have corroded. Uh, so that could provide sort of further structural uh, issues to the building going forwards. So one of the, uh, the key questions that we've been asked as part of the feedback so far is what will happen to the books and PCs within uh, the libraries that are proposed to be closed if they were to be closed. Um, we will look to house as many books and PCs as possible across the, the other library buildings. Um, so we would get as many books as we possibly could onto the shelves, uh, space uh, and capacity uh, allowing. Uh, any books that, that couldn't be put on display would uh, be available to, uh, to reserve and, and collect from their next nearest local library. Uh, again, we would look to, uh, to move uh, our IT equipment that's recently been upgraded into other uh, library buildings. Uh, again, that depends on available space uh, to be able to do that, uh, but we would look to, to maximise that as much as possible. There have been other questions around how uh, individuals could then access activities and community spaces uh, if the library was to be uh, closed. And we will work with, uh, with the community to identify other voluntary and community sector groups, community uh, spaces uh, that are accessible to them. Um, so uh, yeah, we will, we will work with the community. And then the, the other question that we, uh, we've received qu uh, quite frequently is how would I be able to, uh, what would I be able to do if I couldn't travel to the, to the nearest library? Um, Croydon's library service offers a, a home library uh, service uh, where those who are eligible uh, due to uh, mobility issues are able to, to register and we, we can deliver books uh, to, uh, to individuals' homes. Uh, there is also a befriending service where a volunteer uh, can work with uh, the member to, to collect books, uh, drop them off at the home and to, uh, to take them back uh, and get them refreshed. Uh, so we would encourage uh, those options uh, where possible. Uh, several suggestions have come through uh, regarding income generation. So uh, are our libraries buildings uh, able to be hired out to uh, out of hours? Uh, could there be meeting rooms that could be used uh, to generate an income? Uh, and we will look at each individual uh, library space dictates that we can't do that in some uh, some of our library buildings, but we will uh, we will look at whether that's possible. Uh, there's been suggestions around cafes and shops being located on uh, the site of libraries. Um, we know from uh, experience that cafes in libraries generally don't uh, generate a lot of income. Uh, it is more about being able to uh, increase the the offer to uh, to our members so that they don't have to go elsewhere uh, and they can extend their stay in the library. Uh, but from uh, experience from other local authorities, the they don't generate a significant amount of income back into the service. Uh, another suggestion was around chargeable desk space for small businesses and entrepreneurs. Uh, and uh, it's a good suggestion. It's something that we will uh, investigate further uh, while also not wanting to discourage uh, small businesses uh, for, from coming into the libraries. Uh, been asked around how we could use the buildings as art galleries and event spaces and uh, leading up to borough culture we are planning on on doing that much more working with colleagues uh, in um, museums and archives uh, but there are considerations that we need to, to factor in such as security and environmental conditions um, and then finally around fundraising 
uh, whether we, the council could uh, generate any additional income. And we do look at uh, grant opportunities uh, that are available to the council, but um, from a fundraising perspective, uh, that is best done by the local community uh, and then a donation to uh, to the service rather than uh, the council trying to, to do that. Uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, we hosted a uh, community run libraries national peer network uh, webinar on Saturday. Uh, the webinar will be available uh, on our libraries consultation website if you weren't able to attend. Uh, we had six different libraries from across the, the country, from uh, Jedburgh near Newcastle down to Wool in uh, Devon, uh, and uh, including some uh, in central London, um, that provided a really good uh, background as to uh, operating a, a community run library, some of the things that needed to be considered, uh, the relationship with the local authority. So some decided to have a very close relationship with the local authority, others decided to go completely alone. Uh, the different models for uh, purchasing books, whether that is uh, through completely through donations or from fundraising and buying their own books. Uh, so there are a number of different options and uh, we will uh, work with any community group who are interested in uh, running uh, a community library from any of the existing buildings. Um, we don't want to be prescriptive as to how that would work, but please do uh, approach us um, through uh, any of the, the available channels and we will uh, set up a meeting to, to have a conversation as to how we could potentially take that forward. Uh, so at that point, I will hand back to, to Sarah to cover some of the questions that uh, we've received. Thank you, Rob. Um, and one of our attendees has just asked in the chat, actually, whether anyone's asked any questions yet. And I've just replied and said no one on the webinar has. And so I'd encourage people to put their questions in the in the Q&A and we will come to them. But I do have some submitted um, in advance, uh, which I will go through. So the first one is from Liz Bebbington, who I think is on the uh, webinar, but has to leave um, in about 15 minutes. So it's good to get this answered um, before she does have to leave. So her, her question is about um, it, if the worst happens and the decision is made to demolish Sh Shirley Library and sell the land, what would happen to the clock and the plaque given by SPRA, the Local Residents Association, for those who don't know the acronym, in memory of Ian Gibson, a former active member of the library. Um, Councillor Lewis, do you want to say what would happen? Yeah, look, uh, uh, just to start by saying thanks to everyone who's involved in SPAN, um, great local residents association do great work um, for Shirley. Um, obviously, um, you know, we're hopeful that um, uh, a library service will continue um, in Shirley and um, we'll work with the community to try and, and make that um, a possibility. Um, if in the scenario outlined in the question, um, you know, that wasn't possible, uh, we'd obviously work with SPAN and, and other concerned residents to try and find the best solution um, for that clock and that plaque, maybe uh, putting on a new building or um, repurposing it to another building. Um, and you know, through this process and, um, you know, some work was done behind the scenes, our borough archivist actually um, offered to facilitate a kind of oral history project um, with SPAN, um, potentially about, um, you know, um, the gentleman that the clock is um, laid in, in memory of, um, and, uh, you know, she can, um, she can help um, and do that. So um, hopefully that might um, be an interesting project for, for members. Brilliant, thank you. Um, there are some questions starting to come in in the Q&A now, but I'm going to go to the pre-submitted questions again first. So I'm just going to pick this uh, first one up. So, um, the, sorry, this next one up. So um, Caroline Porter asked a question um, about um, some covenants. She asked a very detailed question, giving a lot of information about the nature of the, um, of the covenants that she thinks are on the building. I'm not going to read the whole question out because it's got, um, because it's just got a lot of very detailed numbers of title numbers and, and what have you that, um, it would take a while to read out. But just to reassure people that we do have someone, uh, a council officer called Rob Lyons, who's in our estates team, who is looking into uh, covenants and other restrictions um, on both the building and the site to see whether they're, to see what covenants, that, if any, there are 
and what enforcement um, uh, or what um, regulations we need to comply with in terms of in terms of complying with those covenants. And of course, if they do exist and we are legally bound, we won't do anything to contravene um, covenants or or other similar restrictions. Just to give people uh, that assurance. Um, uh, so, um, a next question, um, which has come up in, in different forms um, on all of the webinars that we've run uh, so far. So, has the council carried out an equality impact assessment to establish whether the many elderly and or disabled residents living south of Wickham Road will be adversely affected by the closure of Shirley Library? If they will, has the council considered how it would mitigate this? Uh, Rob, I'll come to you first and then I'll come to Councillor Lewis. Thanks, Tara. Um, so we are developing the uh, Equalities Impact Assessment as uh, part of our phase two. Uh, <clears throat> we are looking at uh, the information that we've, we've currently got on demographics and uh, socioeconomic information, uh, particular uh, underrepresented uh, population groups, um, and that will help form part of our uh, decision making and mitigations. Uh, at the moment, this is phase one. So this is about information gathering. This is about uh, you being able to provide your feedback to us uh, to take into consideration before we put together a formal proposal as part of phase two. And at that point, we will then publish the uh, Equalities Impact Assessment based around those specific uh, proposals. Brilliant, thank you. Councillor Lewis? Yeah, obviously um, changes to services will uh, mean that people have to access the service in different ways and that will mean a change to routine and change to journeys um, and uh, at this stage as Rob said we're in the first stage of consultation so we encourage everyone to fill out the form let us know how it will impact them and, um, uh, and, and, and you know that will be factored into the decision making process but you know ultimately I hope that there will be a community run solution here and um we we might see um you know a library service continuing um, in show thank you um on a similar um uh similar theme on the, on the equalities impact i've got two questions pre-submitted about the demographic uh, nature of the local community around Shirley Library um, and particular concerns about uh, the number of elderly residents who use um, Shirley Library. Um, so one is about whether age affects um, people's ability to actually be able to use the library and whether that accounts for the declining use. And then there's a question related to that about the suitability of the toilet being an outdoor uh, uh, toilet given the demographic um, of the usership of the library. Rob, do you want to come in first on those? Yeah, thanks, Sarah. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, it's a really good question around um, whether the um, so the, the demographic in the local community uh, so particularly the uh, sort of more elderly residents that are in and around there, um, whether that has an impact on the, the service. Um, we do get relatively good attendance, uh, particularly for events and activities with, within uh, Shirley Library uh, from that particular uh, community group. Um, and they are generally there for, for several hours. So um, I suppose one of the things that we we need to know is does the does the service off, offered reflect the needs of the the community so um just as a an example uh other books that we're providing with it within the library the right kind of books that um that residents of uh shirley library would would want to to use do they need to be sort of larger print uh are there specific things that we need to to take into consideration uh, to encourage more people to, to use the library service um, that we may not have factored in previously. So I think this is a really good opportunity for people to be able to provide that feedback. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier around sort of uh, attendance at events and activities, generally that is is quite good uh, within sort of the elder, uh, elder resident group. Um, 
I would imagine it possibly is a factor for, for some people um, having to, to go outside to, to the toilet. And, and part of that is one of the, the things that we want to consider as uh, regarding the use of the, the building and the suitability of, of the building in, in the long term as a, uh, a suitable uh, community space. Thank you. Um, have you got anything to add to that, Councillor Lewis? No. No, brilliant. Um, so the next question, and then um, this is the last pre-submitted question, actually, and then I will come on to the ones um, in the in the Q and A. Um, so this asks, why hasn't the council measured the amount of time library user, users, um, sorry, library visitors actually spend in the library, rather than just the number of users? And then the questioner goes on to um, give a number of examples. So, for example, the Friday Knit and Natter group that's often well attended with lasting three hours and some arts, arts and crafts sessions um, uh, and other children's sessions that often have uh, perhaps smaller numbers of people staying in the library for a long time. Um, can you, Rob, can you tell us whether you have taken that into account? Um, it's not been part of our consideration so far um, from an ability to be able to to accurately uh, count that information. Um, we have uh, late counters as people sort of go in and out of the library that uh, the count uh, people coming and going and uh, and that gives us the um, the indication for uh, for number of visits. Uh, but for how long an individual stays, it's, it's very difficult to, to track that uh, accurately. Um, so it's not been a, a consideration as, uh, so far, but I think if, uh, if that is, is relevant, then that's uh, good feedback that we, we need to receive. Um, and I would uh, recommend, if, if you haven't already done so, putting that through as part of the, the survey response. Thank you, Rob. So now I'm coming to the questions in the chat. The first one is from Susie Stoyle, uh, which is, is there a plan to sell the building currently used um, for Shirley Library? Um, I think I'll, I'll start there and then bring, uh, bring the others in. There aren't any plans at the moment because obviously we've got no final plans for what to do uh, for, for what the future shape of the library service is. As Rob explained in his presentation, we're generating ideas at the moment. And um, after, uh, after this period of consultations closed on the 14th of March, we will look at all of the ideas we've had in and then come forward um, later in April with some final proposals to consult on. And obviously we can only take decisions about what to do with sites that are currently used for libraries after we've made a decision about, um, about what, the future use of those are as library sites. So are they going to close? Are they going to go to community use, um, uh, et cetera? So, so no, not at the moment um, is, is the answer to that. Does Rob or Councillor Lewis have anything to add? Yeah, and just, just to add to that, Sarah, I'm really hopeful that through this first phase of consultation, we can develop some community models of operation and ownership of the library in Shirley, and um, that it may you know, there may be a continuation of the, of the library service in that site, but um, albeit at a dramatically reduced cost to the council. So, um, you know, absolutely nothing, you know, no decisions taken at the moment. We're, we're, we'll wait to see what comes out in the, in, in the consultation. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, so the next question is from Beverly. Um, uh, Beverly asks, um, uh, GLL already run leisure services in the borough. Have they been approached with regards to taking over the library services as well um, as they do in many other areas? Uh, Councillor Lewis, do you want to come in on this first? Rob's also indicated he wants yeah, to answer look, it. I, I mean, um, you, you know, what I would say is that um, we're delighted to be working with GLL in our leisure provision. Um, uh, obviously, we're in consultation and there's lots of different parties who are interested um you, you, you know i can't speak for for everyone and i you know obviously there's sort of commercially comp, you know sensitive kind of information and all that kind of stuff but we do invite um we are inviting kind of um participation in the um in the consultation from a range of different um groups and and residents and, and providers and we hope that um that some will be potentially interested in 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 running um, some or all of our libraries potentially um, but, um, but yeah look I mean we're, we're out to consultation we're ex inviting expressions of interest from from everyone 
and uh, we hope there's some interesting um, options that arise from that. Thank you. Um, and Rob, you um, indicated you want to answer this. Have you got anything to add? Uh, no, I think that's that's covered it. I mean, uh, we are uh, in partnership with GLL for, for leisure services. Um, and yeah, that was just to, to confirm that, really. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, uh, so the next one uh, is from Jason Cummings. Have there been any changes in hours or services that might have impacted the attendance figures over the years shown? Rob, you're probably best to answer that detail. Uh, so uh, there were a reduction in hours in the Carillion days, uh, but uh, can confirm that over the, the last five years, uh, in the, the period that we reported the figures on, uh, that uh, there has been no reduction in, in the number of hours. Thank you. Uh, that's very clear. Um, so then uh, a question from Barry Hengist. Um, I realise that uh, as council staff, you are having to implement budget cuts from a mess you probably had nothing to do with creating. I'm still angry that those who manage the borough's money uh, so badly are not um, those who are going to lose services and facilities, but we have to move forward. Looking at the state of the building, it might end up being demolished. I assume if a new building arrives, it might have a community or library space on the ground floor. And this could, if needed, be run by the community. Um, I think Councillor Lewis has already been really clear that we're looking for community uh, organisations to help us run the library service, you know, and, and we ran a session on Saturday um, and that will go up uh, online. So if anyone's on the webinar who does want to talk to us um, about um, the practicalities of running community libraries, please do get in touch via the library's consultation email. Councillor Lewis, I don't know whether you want to add anything to that. Yeah, look, I mean, um, obviously we hope that some community um, models of operation might come forward and we'd hope to work with the community to, to achieve that. Um, look, I mean, there's lots of ifs and maybes in that question. Um, you know, it depends what, what, what happens in the consultation and we'll have to we'll take it step by step. So. Thank you. Um, Rob, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, no, just to say that uh, there are issues with the building that would need to be taken into consideration as part of any relationship with a, a community group, and it, it does form part of our, uh, our recommendation at this stage around the, the high maintenance costs uh, and the age of the building, um, and knowing that there are potential uh, structural issues that we, we may need to, to consider going forward. Thank you, Rob. Um, Councillor Cummings asks uh, another question. For clarity on the question Susie Stoyle asked, uh, the answer said there were no plans for the sale of the library. Can you clarify that answer? The council is making no preparations for the sale of Shirley or indeed any of the other libraries. Are you sure that's true? Councillor Lewis, do you want to Yeah, look, I mean, um, I don't want to get into a political tit for tat. Hopefully we can have a, a, a useful and constructive session um, you know, and um, answering um, people's questions this evening. Obviously, we're in a consultation process and we haven't made any decision on the future of the library service. So we haven't made any decision on what will happen to the building following that, that process and that, that decision that will happen in the future. So, um, you know, we'll have to see what the library, uh, what the consultation says. Um, and then, you, you know, um, uh, wh whether or not there's a library um, service in that location and um, you know what happens to the building after that if there isn't if, you know so uh, no decisions taken yet. Thank you Councillor Lewis. Um, Ray Wheeler asks um, I do question whether the building as it is at the moment is really suitable for community use. I've given a number of local history talks over the years and the space available for talks is extremely small and has to vie with space for the uh, for the teenagers library section. I think, Rob, you've already covered some of the challenges with the building. Have you got anything that you want to expand on with that? Um, just to say, yeah, it, it, um, there are issues with the, uh, the layout of certain uh, library buildings. And, and we know within, uh, within Shirley Library that uh, it's not necessarily set out in a, in a way that lends itself to be uh, used for uh, for talks and um, and so, uh, events and activities of that type, 
Um, and I think, yeah, that's something to, to consider uh, and for, for community groups uh, thinking about operating that and uh, for us thinking about it as a, a service around potential um, opportunities for additional income for, for hiring out the space. It doesn't necessarily lend itself naturally to that. There are limitations, but there are also sort of workarounds that uh, we could potentially look at uh, depending on uh, on different available options. Thank you. Um, the next question is from an anonymous attendee. Please, can you clarify what cost neutral means? Would the council still carry out maintenance, planned and reactive, and or some staff costs? So I think um, uh, I'll start with this and then I'll bring Rob in. So the, the papers taken to cabinet in November set an amount of money to be taken out of the of the library's budget, um, which is uh, nearly half a million pounds. And so in all, there's different ways that you can take that money out of the library's budget. Obviously, there's different options. You can reduce hours, you can reduce your book stock, you can close libraries as the proposal is at the moment. Um, and there's ways of doing it. What, what we hope to do through this exercise is get community groups to come forward uh, if they can to, to run libraries. We would then need to work through exactly what those plans were. If we maintained any um, finances in the libraries, we would then need to work out where we might save that from elsewhere uh, in, the, in the services. What the public sector does is split its money into what's called capital and revenue. So revenue is the ongoing cost of things like star, heat, light and power. Capital is the building costs. So Rob and I have started to explore what capital investment there might be to help bring the libraries, you know, do some of those works and help, uh, um, help make them more attractive in terms of community groups being able to, to take them on. But that's early days at the moment. And obviously it's a conversation that needs to be had in parallel with groups that are interested in, um, in operating uh, community uh, libraries. So we understand their needs and plans um, as well, because then the capital investment might, um, uh, might change. I don't know whether Rob or Councillor Lewis want to add anything to that. I would just, uh, yeah, I would just say, uh, around that if you haven't done so already uh, just to refer you back to, to Saturday's session with the uh, the community library uh, peer network uh, because there are a number of different options that are available and different business models that uh, need to be looked at on a on a site specific basis um, and they range from uh, agreements with the local authority to continue uh, planned works for uh, purchasing books uh, for access to their uh, digital equipment, uh, but that comes at a cost to the to the local community, right the way through to um, a community group taking on the whole repair, maintenance, operational uh, responsibilities for for a building, um, and down to sort of only receiving donations of books rather than buying their own book stock. It, it can be operated on a, a number of different levels uh, and we'd be happy to talk through those with any interested party as to how that could potentially work at, at Shirley. Um, and that brings us on nicely to Beverly's question, which is the next question. If I wanted to go, um, if, I w if I wanted to help with taking this forward, help run a community library, how would I go about this? So Beverly and to anyone else who's interested, email us at the library's uh, consultation uh, um, uh, uh, email address. We, we want to actively talk to groups who are interested in it. As Rob's just said, also look out for the webinar that we did with the uh, Community Run Libraries Network um, at the weekend. Um, their contact details will be included in that. And they've got, obviously, there's loads of different ways and different models out there to run community libraries. So they are a really good resource in terms of um, helping come up with different ideas and different operating models, because um, each library in each community is different. Um, so each community library needs to really respond to the assets and needs of the community. Um, I don't know whether Councillor Lewis or Rob want to add anything to that. No. no. Um, so Susie Stoyle asks, would it be possible to have a floor plan of the current library, please, Rob? Is it? Do uh, we have one? I believe we, we have one. Uh, 
we'll uh, I'll speak to to my colleague who's responsible for the uh, for the building. Uh, I've just had confirmation from a uh, a colleague that yes, we do have one, so we will be able to share that. Thank you. Um, and and I think as part of the FAQs, it'd be helpful to publish the floor plans of all of the, of all five libraries. Actually, I think that would be a really useful thing to do. Yeah. Um, so Sue Bennett asks, um, have you had much interest from local community groups um, who might be interested in taking it forward? And would there be any money available? I'll come to Councillor Lewis first and then Rob. Yeah, look, just to thank Councillor Bennett for the question. Um, obviously, um, we have had some conversations with community groups who are interested um, in taking, um, you, you know, a, an idea for, for running the library service um, forward. But as Sarah said earlier, we do have to take um, you know, significant amounts of um, funding out of the library service. And so if we were to provide funds for new community setups, then we'd need to find that money somewhere else. So, um, you know, we hope we can find some cost neutral um, models that, uh, you, you know, may, uh, enable us to, do, um, to maintain the library service going forward. So. Thank you very much. And uh, Rob? Uh, no, nothing to add to, to that. Uh, thank you very much. Elizabeth Ash asks, and again, this, is, this has, issue has come up before as well. Community-run libraries have been heavily promoted. If you had a penny for every time you mentioned it, you'd have the funds to open more libraries. How is it possible to state that there is no agenda when community ownership and running of libraries is being pushed so heavily during the consultation phase? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take this, this question, Sarah. Obviously, um, the council is in a, a difficult financial situation at the moment and we are having to look at how we reduce our expenditure from services across the council including in libraries and that you know we can do that by shutting libraries but i didn't get into uh, politics and um, local representation in order to shut libraries so i'm hoping that through the consultation process there might be other ways of operating our library service that enable us to um, to meet our financial requirement to save money from the service. If you think that's some sort of Machiavellian kind of, um, you know, conspiracy, then I'm sorry, but we're trying our best to try and ensure that we maintain a library service going forward. And, um, you know, I'm not going to apologise for that. Thank you, Councillor Lewis. Christina asks, would Shirley Library be able to open on a temporary basis when conditions allow? Obviously, the government sat, sat out their plans yesterday for um, coming out of lockdown. And if I remember the dates correctly, the earliest libraries can open is the 12th of April. Um, and so we will need as a, um, as a council to, uh, to look at all of the guidance, um, follow the data and make plans to open them reopen our library safely so and it, I think it would be our intention to reopen as much of the service as, as as many as possible but obviously the emphasis needs to be on safe and we need to comply with the regulations so I don't think we're going to sit on on this webinar and make um, uh, sort of guarantees or promises about what will open when because we just don't know at the moment but certainly our intention will be to reopen services uh, when conditions allow as, as you say Christina thank you um, I don't know whether Councillor Lewis or Rob have anything to add on that. Um, uh, we, so we've got a question from Councillor Chatterjee. Um, I wasn't clear from the response to an earlier question on this. Have preparations already begun for the sale or demolition of the library? Uh, for, uh, for transparency, I just mentioned that my wife works um, at the library. Councillor so, yeah, Lewis? Yeah, look, thank, thank Councillor Chatterjee for the question. Um, and look, thank, thanks to Mrs Chatterjee as well for, um, you know, everything that she does um, working in the library service. Um, I, I, look, I can't be much clearer than saying we haven't made any decisions yet on the future shape of the library service. So we haven't made any decisions about what will happen to the library building um, because we don't know what, what shape the service will be. You know, I'm hopeful that through this process, we might have some um, community models of operation that continue um, to see a library service operated in the current building um, and uh, that we'll have to wait and see what happens and what is said in the in the consultation process uh, before we make any decisions on what, what will happen after that. So well, I can't be much clearer really. Thank you, uh, Councillor Lewis. We've still got a couple more questions which I'll come to in a second. There's about five minutes of our 
um, allotted time left. So if you do have a question that you've not yet put in the Q&A, um, do now's your chance to get it up and get it asked and answered uh, tonight. Anything that we're not able to get to, of course, we will put in the Q&A, uh, in the FAQ, sorry, that we'll publish after the, after the sessions. So another one from Susie Stoyle. If a community group formed um, uh, to run Shirley Library, could it inherit the books and IT equipment from current from the current library rather than they be distributed amongst uh, other libraries? Rob, I think that is something that we would consider. Uh, and again, it depends on the operating model that the community group wants to uh, to run on. Um, they they may want to to still be part of our our library service part of our um, library management system, uh, part of the library's consortium, have access to uh, to our IT equipment, uh, and potentially even uh, members of staff. But obviously that then would need to be costed uh, and we'd need to work on, on, on that relationship. Uh, there are other models uh, where the, the community group uh, decide not to be, uh, be be part of the, the existing local authority library, library service uh, and are reliant on buying their own books or book donations on purchasing their own IT equipment. Uh, so I think it's it's through dialogue and through a conversation and, and trying to find the model that would work for that particular community group uh, that will we sort of flesh that out over uh, over a period of time, uh, but it is something that we would we would consider. Uh, thank you, Rob. Um, and the last question we've got at the moment is from Elizabeth Ash again. Uh, Councillor Lewis, you are heavily promoting volunteer-run libraries. It's not cost-effective and fraught with issues. I'm very happy to speak with you about the issues uh, with this model. Um, I don't know whether um, you've got anything to, to yeah, add to look, that. Yeah, I, I mean, look, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to. Um, you know, speak after this meeting in more depth with Elizabeth. I know that she's been interested in libraries and Croydon for um, a number of years. Um, you know, I'd invite um, Elizabeth to um, drop me an email and we can work out a, a suitable time. We can do a, a Zoom or a Teams conversation. And um, look, what I'd just say is kind of reference, in reference to what Rob just said, I'm not promoting volunteer run libraries. I'm, you know, calling for community groups to come forward with you know, a model that they think is, is suitable for running our libraries um, in this location. Um, look, and whether that's, you know, through volunteers or paid staff, you know, however, you know, groups can make it work, then, um, you know, we're, we'll, we'll try and work that up. It's, it's not for us to dictate really. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Lewis. And um, if, like um, Elizabeth, um, you've got, strong views and a background and knowledge in it do make sure that you put those your views and your issues with any of the proposals um, uh, or ideas coming forward into the consultation and we will take them into account um, and then Elizabeth has asked another question how is it possible that you're asking for cost neutral solutions when you're saying you might provide stock LMS and even staffing how would this work I, I, I don't know whether Rob or Councillor Lewis wants to come first yeah, I'll come in on, on this one, if that's okay. Um, so we're looking at it, uh, the, the cost savings across the whole of the library service. So uh, as Sarah mentioned earlier, uh, in the region, a half a million pounds. Um, there are different ways that that can be sort of cut and carved to, uh, to find a solution. Uh, and if a community group were able to come together uh, and offer a, a viable solution, uh, that included being part of uh, uh, Croydon Library's bookstock, uh, library management system, and potentially even staffing, then, and we thought that that was a better uh, solution, then we would have to find other savings elsewhere across the service. Uh, but if that is a, a viable solution, then it's something that we will consider uh, and work, work to achieve. Um, but it, we have a limited resources uh, going forwards and we we just need to we'd need to team and ladle that to uh, effectively uh, across the whole of the service thank you very much rob 
um, I don't know, Katz or Lewis, whether you've got anything to, to add to this? Uh, not at the moment, no. no okay. Um, uh, and Elizabeth uh, has responded and said she'd be delighted to take you up on your offer. Um, yeah, but I'm not, I, look, I, I'll, I'll say it here in front of everyone. I'm not going to speak at a communities, uh, Croydon Communities Consortium because there's significant issues with that, um, that organisation. So um, I'm happy to meet with Elizabeth privately um, but I'm not, I'm not going to speak at, uh, at, at that organisation, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. So we are out of questions and uh, beyond our time. Um, so I think the team are going to put up a survey that we've been doing on all of the webinars. Um, Councillor Lewis, do you have any closing remarks? Just thanks to everyone for participating in the webinar. Um, encourage everyone to uh, participate in the consultation. Um, but also to, to share links to the consultation through the networks. Um, it's a difficult time at the moment, so we hope we can reach as many people as possible. Um, uh, yeah, look, uh, thanks for the conversation, the questions, the challenge. Um, it's been an enjoyable session, so um, I hope most people have found it useful. Thank you very much, Councillor Lewis. Rob? Again, just to, to thank everybody for the time this evening and for the ongoing passion and commitment to uh, Croydon's library uh, library service. Uh, we really do welcome your feedback. Uh, if you haven't been able to, to provide feedback so far, please do. Uh, if there's any information that's come out of uh, the sessions tonight or over the last few weeks uh, that's sort of changed your opinions or you want to supply anything additional, please do uh, submit a, a second or third uh, or third survey and if you are interested in uh, discussions around community run library services uh, please do send them uh, through um, we've, um, we do have two more uh, consultation webinars taking place uh, tomorrow night so uh, the first one at Bradmore Green is at 5 30 uh, and then the uh, the last webinar is for Sanderstead Library at 6.45. Uh, so if you are able to attend or, or interested in either of those libraries, then uh, please do register via uh, the library's consultation website, uh, Eventbrite link. Uh, again, uh, finally, just thank you for attending this session. Um, we will be providing copies of uh, all of the webinars that take place uh, on the library's consultation website as well as additional papers and frequently asked questions uh, if you've got any feedback please do send that through uh, to the library's consultation at croydon.gov.uk uh, email address or to the dedicated answer phone that we have uh, on 020 7884 5159 uh, where uh, library staff will uh, take those calls uh, and uh, can respond to requests for, for paper surveys uh, or for uh, answering the survey over the telephone. Thank you very much, Rob. And I'll just reiterate um, uh, Rob and Katz and Lewis's thanks to everyone for uh, attending. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>